got him on for about 10 minutes just to get an update. I appreciate him coming on. Headline from Julie Wilson up on Infowars.com. Former CIA whistleblower targeted by government for Facebook post. Whistleblower calls out government Facebook post, gets threatened by the DOJ. Now, that's the Department of Justice, and I guess that's via the DOD. And the point is, is that Tosh Plumley is a famous whistleblower from uh, back in the church hearings in 77, on record, and the Iran-Contra hearings. But he's still, at 76 years old, the only job he has is a contractor. He's a famous contractor, flew guns to Castro when he was working for the U.S., then flew guns in after him. Bay of Pigs, you name it, all of it. For those that don't know history, he, he's a famous guy. Folks don't know who Chuck Yeager is or Audie Murphy now. <laughs> That's just amazing. But the point is, is that he lived it. He came on our show, said they're going to come after me probably, but I talked to a high-level NATO source and others. It wasn't just the Libyan arms they were covering up to al-Qaeda with the ambassador from Turkey to Syria. It was in the legal export, but illegal to al-Qaeda, out of the State Department giving them actual modern stingers. He's got the DOJ saying, how do you know that? And so uh, he's going to give us an update on what he's dealing with right now, what's happening as a contractor, a mercenary in his own words. But he's not a mercenary because, you know, he's, he's got these contacts. He's risking his life to do this. And as Jim Garrison said, you got to be in the spotlight or get dead. Go ahead. Right, right. So I thought, well, the only thing that's going to protect me is get this information out there before the fact. So I began to say, okay, here's the story. This after these questions that I had, uh, for the sake of Mrs. Smith, answer the questions of what happened to her son. Why, the, why is there, in my opinion, a cover-up? The only reason that I feel that there's a cover-up is because of the weapons that were shipped legally through the direct commercial sales that were getting filtered into rebels' hands and being used against our troops. Sure, and now Obama so signed an order saying he's allowed to arm terrorists, but it's retroactive, it still doesn't hold water. So what's the DOJ? What, what are they saying to you? Well, all right, they were supposed to come out here and we're going to have a sort of a top level, well, not a top level, we're going to have a meeting about this at Peterson Air Force Base sometime around the 20, I think it was the 23rd, 24th, somewhere around there. Um, and then as a result of me going to the public, releasing the story, they called off that meeting. Uh, the meeting was going to be uh, a preliminary meeting to talk to me about this uh, NATO source and also my colonel friend. Uh, and uh, I was uh, told that uh, I would be called back. This was a preliminary meeting, and I'd probably be called back to D.C. to testify to what I said publicly. Sure, they always say uh, that, though. You know, I mean, you're smarter than I am. You've been through this. They're trying to find out well, who the sources are. Well, that's exactly what I'd already gone through that with the Fast and Furious situation, and then also back in some earlier stuff where I got gagged because they threatened me with, after I testified. Sure, so I you called Jim story. Mars, he got a hold of me, so you could get this right. out before they gagged you. So what's the latest? All right, well, the latest was then they come in and tell me that uh, uh, they're taking the, what I have said and turn that over to the DOJ and the Homeland Security and State Department for a possible investigation of releasing uh, national security matters. Uh, hell, I'm not even a, uh, an employee of the federal government. I'm not privy to top secret information, but I did have a leak that leaked some information to me. Sure, sure, sure. I, I mean, here's the deal. You knew what was going on. We all know. These are criminals right. that murdered him to cover up their al-Qaeda arming, and now they're coming to threaten you with the same Justice Department that ran Fast and Furious and that runs all the narcotics well, and the little kids and everything else, and the mafia is mad you're exposing them. You're, the mafia is well, mad you're not a total coward. Well, okay, so I'm looking for, um, you know, I'm telling you the story. I mean, so, as a result, the meeting was canceled because it was already public, and they said to me that they're going to turn this over for an investigation, and they wanted to know my sources. And I said, well, I'm a journalist. I'm not going to divulge my sources. And this is the quote. Sir, we will see about that. To me, I considered that as a threat. And then immediately I called my friend Jim Mars. He advised me to get back in touch with you, get it out public before the fact that you've been threatened. I take it as a threat. Now, they want to tell me to tell them who my sources were in NATO and who my sources are in the U.S. military. I refuse to do that. So now, are they going to try to make me a Bradley Manning and a Snowden or a cross between the two? 
He needs more documentation. And as much as you can throw out there right now, so that's that's too it's too late for them to stop you, the better. I mean, obviously, they probably know the colonel he's talking to, and they know who the NATO guy is. They just want to try to have a chilling effect. But what if everybody goes public? Right. Uh, Tosh, make your points. I'm sorry, I'm running on here. No, okay, that's no no problem. This is a like I say, this is an all uh, a project that's been put on the shelf. It was put on okay after Cuban days. Then with the gun running operations, we financed both sides. We sent guns to Batista. We sent guns to Fidel Castro when they called it cash oil uh, back in the uh, the fifties, the late fifties, early sixties. Sent to the Bay of Pigs. Guns going to both sides. We come all the way up into Cuba. Uh, Sir, Kansas, absolutely. Kansas, we beyond. know you've put that on record. It's historical. You've right. testified to Congress. Okay, so then they then they push it off. Now here's back to the focus. Back to where it started all this. I started these questions. Let's, do I have time? To, okay, I'm going to make a direct challenge on your broadcast yeah. to the senators that Stewart is trying to get me in contact with, to the mainstream media who will uh, dodge these questions, to the people that go to a press conference and ask the president of the United States questions. If they ask these kind of questions, they'd be thrown out on their ear. Can I ask these questions on your program, log them before the fact, and ask them to give you direct answers to these questions? Yes, sir. we got to go to break here in a moment. We can come back and do those questions, but start getting into your direct questions now. My direct question is the United States uh, secretly arming and supporting various factions of the Syrian rebels with high-caliber uh, impact weapons from the United States arsenal. Yes or no? Number two is the United States' little-known direct commercial sales program, also known as the Blue Lantern Report, being used as a cutout to secretly aid both sides of a Middle Eastern civil war. That's question number two, yes or no. Is America again playing both sides against the middle for corporate gain, as previously demonstrated by the Cuban project of the 50s and 60s, as well as the Iran Contra fiasco of the 80s? Tosh, stay there. We're back in one minute. Infowars.com forward slash show for the video feed. They're in our article, former CIA whistleblower targeted by government. Why don't they ask them? Why don't they answer? Why don't they answer and give Miss Smith back? Let's focus back to what started me opening that Facebook page. Let's start back to why I come on your program. Let's go back to what happened when I contacted Jim Mars, who helped me start all this. Let's refocus about, and these questions are very important. Mrs. Smith should be asking these questions. The American people should be asking these exactly. questions. Exactly. You've already done a lot of work. You've done it over and over again, and people need to get up off their hind ends and do it. So let's get into your last points. Well, they talk about, everybody talks about, and blasts their lips around the country, but nobody wants to go out on point and attack. And I, when, I, when I say attack, I don't mean rabble rouse and talk a bunch of bullshit out of your lips and your butt and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> I'm talking about facts. Is the United States little-known direct commercial sales program, also known as the Blue Lantern Report, being used as a cutout to secretly aid both sides of a Middle Eastern civil war? Yes or no, Mr. President, Mr. Senate, Mr. Whoever just heard this? Answer, yes or no. We want it on record. If you say no and we find out later, you lied to the American people. That's my goal. That's my aim. I'm very adamant about it. My whole life is hanging on what the hell happened on these questions. Now, why is it that these questions will not be answered for Mrs. Smith, who lost her son in Benghazi, and also the other people that lost loved ones in Benghazi? I have another question. I'm full of questions. I'm a journalist. That's my job, to ask questions. Why can't these questions be asked in a press conference to the president? Why can't we get these people to answer these questions for the record? Yes or no? What happened to those weapons after legally being sold by this direct commercial program after they leave our control? Are they monitored? How come our troops have to stand up and face these American weapons where in the hands of radical steering groups? That's a question. Absolutely, Tosh. We're out of time. I'm going to talk to you during the break here. But the questions are up on InfoWars.com. They're up on your Facebook uh, as well. We're linked to that on InfoWars.com. And I understand we need to all need to get these questions out and force them to answer them. 
And I want to also thank Stuart Rhodes for being here. Nightly news coming up tonight, 7 o'clock. Central, please pray for all whistleblowers like Mr. Plumley.